Have you ever watched one of those videos in which someone soulfully performs the digits of pi, accompanied by lush harmonies? Well, as a musician and math enthusiast, these videos have always kind of bothered me. The suggestion seems to be that a hidden music has been discovered to the digits, when really it's been imposed upon them. So for Pi Day this year, I thought I'd dive into the musical and mathematical issues with Pi Digit Music, and then give you a taste of a different kind of Pi music, which sounds like this. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, let's talk a little bit about music theory. From a musical point of view, the basic problem is that any sequence of digits can be made to sound musically meaningful if you map them to the right notes and contextualize them with the right chords. These videos act like you're hearing pi, but what you're really hearing is an arbitrary mapping from digits to pitches, accompanied by chord progressions designed to glue these notes together and make them seem like they have some sort of hidden meaning or pattern. It's actually kind of interesting how this harmonization works from a music theory point of view. In theory, we have a concept called harmonic and non-harmonic tones. To illustrate this, let's take a look at this measure of a Chopin prelude. The left hand spells out a fairly straightforward harmonic progression, a tonic F-sharp minor chord moving to a dominant C-sharp 7 chord. But in the right hand, only about half the notes come from these chords. The other half are what's called non-harmonic tones, notes that move between and around the notes of the underlying harmony. There are several different categories of non-harmonic tones, but the important lesson as far as pie music is concerned is that these tones give us the flexibility to harmonize the same melody in a lot of different ways. If we then add to that the fact that our modern ears are used to hearing not just triads, but extended chords featuring sevenths, ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths, we can pretty much do anything we want with the harmony. Take this series of notes from the pie music I played at the beginning of this video. Here I'm harmonizing it with a G minor triad, with the E flat and C acting as non-harmonic tones. But I could just as easily have harmonized it like this. Or like this. In a way, making music like this out of the digits of pi is kind of like a compositional Rorschach test. You can hear whatever you want to hear in this seemingly random series of digits. Which brings us to the mathematical issue with this kind of pi music, the randomness of the digits. I have to come clean with you. In the pi music at the beginning of this video, I actually just played random digits after 3.14159. So whatever mystical connection those digits sounded like they had, they weren't from pi at all. Or were they? See, many people believe that pi is what's called a normal number. What this means is that the digits behave statistically as though they are completely and uniformly random. Take a look at this plot of the frequencies of 0 through 9 in the first 100 digits of pi. And now the first 1000 digits. 10,000. 100,000. A million. The more digits we look at, the more evenly distributed they seem to be. But wait a minute, you say. Those first hundred digits looked a little bit unbalanced. What's with all the sixes? Maybe there's some hidden structure to these digits after all. Well, I'm afraid I lied again. Those weren't the frequencies for the digits of pi. Those were the frequencies for a randomly generated sequence of digits. Here are the frequencies for the real digits of pi. Just like with the random digits, they're a little bit uneven at first, but then converge over time to an even distribution. Anyway, if pi is a normal number, not only does every digit occur equally often, but also every string of digits. This plot, for example, shows the frequency of every two-digit sequence in the first million digits of pi. And here's the frequency of every three-digit sequence. If pi truly is normal, every string of digits, no matter how long, would be equally common. And since the decimal expansion of pi goes on forever, this would mean that any string of digits you want can be found in pi somewhere down the line. Which means that my fake pie music from the beginning, where I just use random numbers, is probably real pie music after all, since that string of random digits would occur somewhere in pie, inconceivably far along. But then again, if any random string of numbers could be pie music, the whole enterprise just feels a little silly, doesn't it? Perhaps there's another way. 
and try to come up with a different, more meaningful way to make music from Pi. It occurred to me that the decimal expansion for Pi actually represents a kind of infinite series. 3 plus 1 over 10 plus 4 over 100 plus 1 over 1000 plus 5 over 10,000, etc. The problem is that while this infinite series converges to Pi, musically it's no better than just picking random numbers. However, there are other sequences that converge to Pi in less random ways. One famous example is the Leibniz series. If you take four times parentheses 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh plus a ninth and so on and so on, that series actually converges to Pi. So I decided to write up a little bit of Python code and map each step in this series to a different musical pitch based on its value. And this is what I came up with. Now having done this, there's still a bit of a question of how much of this is coming from Pi and how much of this is just my musical mapping. What I just played for you used a major scale for the pitches, but I could just as easily have used a chromatic scale, an octatonic scale, or my personal favorite, a blues scale. Regardless, the point here is that there's more to this than just these arbitrary musical choices. The overall shape of this gesture is a reflection of a real relationship that Pi has to the reciprocal odd numbers. But it's a little boring, right? It's almost too orderly, and Pi is too mysterious to be orderly. So I decided to look around and see if I could find a more interesting infinite sequence that converges to Pi. There's a whole list of these sequences on Wolfram's math world. And scrolling down the page, I came across this exciting looking graph. It turns out to be an infinite product that converges to pi in a really odd meandering way. Here's the formula for that product. The term p sub n actually stands for the nth prime number. So there's some crazy relationship being expressed here between pi and the prime numbers. So with that, we come to the music that I teased you with at the beginning of this video. A sonification of this formula from Euler relating pi to the prime numbers. Each step in the infinite product is mapped to a single note, and as hundreds of these notes fly by, we gradually meander our way towards pi. Are you ready? So what do you think of all of this? Am I missing something about pi digit music? Are there other pi formulas that might be interesting to sonify? And how else could we represent pi musically in ways that highlight meaningful mathematical relationships? Let me know in the comments. Lastly, if you like longer form videos like this, featuring custom animations and sonifications, consider supporting me on Patreon. Not only does it support my work on this channel, but it also supports my work on Scamp, the open source libraries I created for composing music in Python. Plus, you get extra bonuses. For this video, for example, patrons will get the MIDI file for the music you're listening to now, as well as the music notation for the fake Pi music I played at the beginning. Anyway, with that, I'll see you at the next themed holiday. Perhaps May the 4th? <laughs>